good morning, everybody. Welcome to the first Stronger Together Get Together of 2022. And it's lovely to see you all. A very warm welcome. And hmm, the format today is going to be the same as it has been before. We're going to have a guest speaker. We're going to have some breakout rooms. And then we're going to regroup. And we're going to close at 12.15. OK. I know a couple of you have to nip off early. And that's, you know, thank you for letting me know that. Um, but we will just sort of all come back together and 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 have um, a chat and see uh, how we'd all got on in the breakout rooms. Sarah's got a little thing for us to do, and um, so why have we the guest today that we have? Well, there's two reasons, and here's Jim coming in again. <laughs> you said to try us, really, Jim. <laughs> So there's two reasons that I've invited Sarah Sully to join us today. The first is that the world is still a little bit of a crazy place and we can only, we can't control what happens out there, but we can control how we respond to it. And we can actually influence how well we respond to it by looking after ourselves physically, mentally and emotionally. So we want to respond to the challenges in, in the best way that we can. Okay, that's my whole mindset, mindset as I get older. I've started to realise that. Wish I'd realised it a good sort of 30, 40 years ago. But uh, at least I'm coming. <laughs> bit, bit, bit late to the party, but at least I'm getting there now. And the second reason that I've um, invited um, Sarah along is that I've realised that actually there's so much that I still want to achieve. There's so much that I want to do. And I've finally started to realize that what I put into my body, i.e. what I eat and what I drink, has, I know, a direct correlation to how I feel um, physically and how I feel uh, mentally. So what my mindset is like and how I feel emotionally. And for those of you who know me, you know that I am quite um, up and down. I'm hyper hyper highly sensitive so I do feel things very passionately and I do feel the lows very passionately as well and actually I've realized that that's a bit of a, a showstopper when you're running your own business so I've realized that actually if you can level yourself out then actually you can achieve more and you can be more productive but also this whole concept that 95% of how we respond is down to the subconscious and we can actually um, interject our subconscious with our conscious to actually respond in a more positive way that coupled with the fact, fact that ha happy people are something like 30 percent more productive makes it a no-brainer really that actually it makes absolute sense to have a look and see what we're putting into our body see how we treat our bodies um, so that we can have a more positive mindset and so that we can actually have more energy and our emotions are healthier so for those two reasons I invited Sarah a health and fitness coach along to join us she's known to many of us um, already. Uh, we absolutely love Sarah and she's always got so much to share. Um, a big thank you for joining us, Sarah. I have to just say to people, you know, you, you've just had a very big operation on your back before Christmas. You've had a really challenging couple of years um, and you have currently got COVID or are you coming out the other side? So <laughs> well done it. for having COVID. <laughs> And well done for that. Well done for being here. Think of all those lovely antibodies that you've got. But thank you. And if I do understand that you're not feeling 100%, so if you need to just, you know, stop early or whatever, then um, that, that's absolutely oh, we're good. fine. We're okay. Good. okay, okay. okay. I'll straight back go on. <laughs> so without further ado, um, I'm going to hand over to Sarah. Ah, oh, thank you very much. Right. Uh, is it possible to... Um, share screens is that all right yeah cool all right i'm just going to start a timer so i know how long i ramble on for um okay so my name is sarah i am a little bit croaky i do apologize but i am actually feeling about 100 percent better than i was three days ago so that's all good uh where is the presentation there it is good oh uh hopefully you can all see this can you I'm just going to change it into, why does it do that? That view. There we are. And let me just change my view so I can see you lovely people. So can you see the presentation and can you see me? Yep, all good. Good. I can't see you guys, which I don't like. I don't like being able to just talk to myself. That's all a little bit weird. I spend a lot of time doing that. Enough of 
So there we are. Good. Right. So my name is Sarah Southey from the Southey Way, and I am here to help you thrive, body, mind, and soul. Um, so let's get cracking. Keep your uh, speakers open. I love a bit of interaction, and it's going to be more of a question based presentation so that it's thought provoking for you guys rather than me going to stand up here and tell you exactly what you should and shouldn't do. Don't believe in that. That's not what I'm about. Um, so let's get cracking. First up, who even are you? Uh, well, I am a survivor of teenagers. I've got now got an 18 year old and a 20 year old. Yes, I love it. It's brilliant. Uh, multiple Spaniels of which this one, Bonnie, is my favourite. And yes, I do have favourites. Uh, I love a challenge. Um, Mitt will know that uh, I, I used to love my CrossFit and that is a challenge in itself. Um, looking for some new challenges in my life now that uh, I've got my back sorted and I'm building myself back up. I'm a brewery widow. So uh, some people are golfing widows. I'm a brewery widow. So when my husband comes back from work, he's in the brewery. We have a microbrewery out the front and I, in the shed, I'm out the back. So it's a proper balance in our life. Bit of yin and yang. Uh, I'm a master thriver. Uh, Julia did say I've had an operation. I've got COVID at the minute. Um, over the last, certainly the last two and a half years, I've been through the mill a little bit, which I suppose is not great for a fitness coach. Um, I've had my knees done, I've had my back done. <laughs> I mean, lots of different things going on, health problems, uh, also personal things happening in my life that are very, very challenging. Um, and actually, it is all about how you look at life. So I class myself as a master thriver. Life's been pretty shitty over the last couple of years, but I'm still here, I'm still bouncing back, and there's always a silver lining. No matter how hard it gets, there's, you've got to find it. Um, and the last but not least on my list is uh, I am an adult, but only sometimes. I think um, adulting is completely overrated. And the older I get, the more overrated it is. And I'm on a mission to encourage other people to have more fun in their lives. So if, if this, this presentation does one thing, I would be happy that you went away and did just chose to do something a little bit silly or a little bit fun, or a little bit different from your normal life. Okay, that's me. Uh, what is this other way? What is in this name? It's a very strange name to give a fitness business. You know, it's not uh, Six Packs or Us. Um, I really, truly believe that we've all got to choose our own way. And the Southey way originated from my own personal journey. So. I had, I call them kind of my black 10 years. Uh, when the kids were little, kind of lost my identity, was very depressed, postnatal depression, lots of stuff going on. And I really hit, hit bottom. And it was not a fun place to be, funnily enough. And I remember looking for somebody to help me. Now, if you have met me in the past, and certainly you're going to get this impression pretty quickly from this talk, you'll know that... Um, I'm quite forthright and I don't follow instruction too well. So when I was looking for some help, I didn't want somebody that was going to tell me what to do. I didn't want somebody that was going to give me their blueprint. I didn't want somebody that was going to basically give me a path to follow. I felt really deep inside that it was important for me to find my way. And I looked for somebody to help me find my way through this whatever this was and I couldn't find anyone fast forward about eight years later I'd done all the work myself um I gradually took very small steps and built myself back up to version 2.0 um I was, it was 2.0 back then it's probably 7.5 now um and I remember talking to somebody my coach at the time You'll know her, some of you, uh, Tracy Miller. Um, and I, I went to her and I said, look, I was a garden designer at the time. And I said, look, garden design, social media is 
possibly the most dull thing in the world ever. And if I find it dull, how on earth am I going to engage with my audience? And Tracy, I remember to this day, she said to me, um, but you're all over social media. And I said, well, yeah, but that's the CrossFit. That's the competitions that I do. That's what I do for myself. That's where I've got my passion and my, you know, my balance. And she said, well, why aren't you doing that? And literally, as soon as the words were out of her mouth, I realized that I was now the person that I've been looking for eight years ago. And within 24 hours, I'd parked my garden design business, given it to a very good friend of mine and set up the Southey Way. And it's called the Southey Way because I did it my way and I help other people do it their way. So for each and every one of my clients, it is their way. And I think it's really, really important that that is it. So that's why it's called the Southey Way. So you'll see it everywhere. What is going on with the starfish? Well, I did a talk once many moons ago, about six years ago, um, face to face, oh my God, at a breakfast meeting, big long table, there's about 20 people there. And um, I love a bit of interaction and I love a bit of engagement and they had been engaging. And I started talking a bit like I've been talking today, the opening, you know, who am I? Why do I do what I do? And it is like absolutely quiet. You could hear a pin drop. And I remember looking around the table going, oh my gosh, I've lost them. Or they're really listening very intently. It's gonna be one or the other, but I'm really not quite sure which one it is. So we'll carry on, <laughs> carry on regardless. Uh, and we'll find out at the end. At the end of this presentation, there was a line of people waiting to speak to me, which is lovely and fascinating. Um, and there was this one person and I saw every time she came close to speaking to me, somebody would be behind her and she'd move herself to the end of the queue. And um, I thought, that's interesting. Eventually, after about an hour, she gets to me and she says to me, um, really interesting presentation. I really resonate with what you've said about the depression and the life and the identity. Uh, and I know why you wear the starfish. I had a different logo at the time. It's kind of like a yin -y yangy thing. And I said, uh, oh, that's really interesting because I know why I wear the starfish. Today I've gotten a different one. The one in the picture is the one that I normally wear. Um, it's a present from my kids about 15 years ago, long before the Southey Way existed. And I've worn it every day since. And uh, she said, I know why you wear the starfish. And I said, oh, right, okay. Uh, tell me why I wear the starfish. And she said, I'll do better than that. I'll send you why I think you wear the starfish. So after the presentation, I get an email in my inbox and it's the story about the little boy on the beach after a storm. Has anybody heard this story? So um, a little boy on a beach after the storm, there's all these starfish washed up on the beach and he's very carefully picking one up and putting it back into the sea. And he's picking one up and taking it back into the sea. And this old man comes up to him and says, why are you doing this? You know, you're help. There's hundreds of these starfish. You know, you can't help them all. And he picks up another one and he puts it back in the sea. And he said, yes, but I helped that one. And as soon as I heard that story, I knew what my brand had to be. So that is why it's the starfish. And interestingly, one of my clients sent me this pitch and this is the beach from where she used to live. Can you imagine how lush is that? Um, this is one particular variety of starfish, but even that variety is not all the same. And it so represents what I do. We're, we're all individuals. Um, you can get various different shapes. Ones. There's one with really, really long tentacles. It's quite amazing. Um, so just like these starfish, so too, we are individuals. And I think it totally represents who I am and what I stand for. So having rambled on a little bit, I think it's important to know where, I come, where I'm kind of coming from. Uh, this is the bit where I hopefully uh, impart some 
gems, some wisdom, and, uh, and help you think about your life and how you perhaps could thrive a little bit more. So if you've got any questions at any time or um, anything, or you disagree with me, I love a bit of that, uh, just shout out. Uh, so what is the meaning of life? Uh, points mean prizes, uh, 42, anyone? What's the book? Hitchhikers. Yeah, one of my favorite. My daddy used to read it to me when I was little. Um, this kind of, for me, is the absolute crux of everything. Because if you don't really know what drives you, how can you know what's going to make you thrive? What's going to help you move on this lovely, amazing, varied journey of life? So just on the right hand side, there's some questions there that might be worth having to think about when you have a moment, you know, those quiet moments when you're not working and not uh, looking after families and not um, cleaning the house or whatever it is, those quiet moments, these kind of questions are quite good to think about. Uh, I can, if anybody wants these slides, you know, I can just send them to you afterwards, that's absolutely fine. Um, it took me until the age of 42 to find out what my meaning of life was, which was quite coincidental. And literally, I've just realised that because that moment that I was talking about with uh, Tracy was around that age. Spooky. Um, and I realised that this is my purpose now. This is absolutely what drives me. It drives me in my personal life. It drives me in my professional life. Everything revolves around this thriving rather than just surviving. And I love that phrase, uh, that question, what makes you glow? Because we all have those moments when it's just that, that heartwarming or the moment that gives you goosebumps. And it's really important if we're in tune with how we feel to recognize when those moments are. And then do more of them. Although I have to say, Sarah, when you say, say the word glow, as a middle-aged woman, that has completely <laughs> different connotations. <laughs> I'm with you. I'm, not, I'm, I'm glowing at the minute. I'm not sure whether it's the COVID, the nerves, or the menopause. <laughs> it's going to be one of them. Uh, um, but yeah, I think, I think it's important to feel what makes you like, I do like the word glow. All right. Um, what is your value? Somebody knows this film, surely. Bill and Ted. And, 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 no, this isn't Bill and Ted. It's Wayne's World. World, isn't it? Yeah, Wayne's World. <laughs> Excellent. Party on. Uh, another one of my faves. Um, who wants a boring old PowerPoint presentation? Um, but it's got a valid point because if we don't think we're worthy and we don't know our own value, how are we going to live this life of purpose? I bet you didn't expect a presentation like this from a fitness coach. So I'm a bit of a fitness coach with a difference. So I kind of class myself as not just a personal trainer. It's kind of, you can't separate out a physical health from the rest of your life. Um, so again, questions, um, you know, what is your value? What do you bring each day? How do you show your value to yourself? Because if you don't recognize your value and reward your value, then your brain, which is full of lots of stuff, is not gonna hunt for those serotonin moments that are gonna go, yes, I'm awesome. Because those moments when you go, absolutely nailed that, are ones that help you thrive. And it's always interesting to know how other people value you, because as a nation, we generally put ourselves down. Um, and the internal mental chatter that we have can be very negative. But actually, because, you know, I, I work really quite intimately with my clients because all of this really affects their ability to commit to stuff. And I say to them, okay, well, you've got that opinion of yourself. If you ask five of your friends 
what they thought of you, what would they say? Would they say that, that you're thinking about yourself? Chances are they wouldn't. So who's to say you are right and those five friends are wrong? Where do you think the balance is? Do you think those five friends are more likely to be right than your one internal beat yourself up chatter? So seeing how other people value us can shed a lot of light on how awesome we are as a person, thereby helping us thrive. Cool. Oh, oh there we go. Uh, how important are you? This is a bit of a cryptic one. So this is a film. Can anybody name it? On the grand theme of what we're talking about? It's a song. It's Monty Python. It's the meaning of life. <laughs> so we tend to think of ourselves as a really, this picture kind of sums up, a really insignificant, that song itself, I hope you all know it. Basically, we are one tiny little speck of this infinite, um, infinite universe goes on and on and on. However, and the way that song ends is the giving birth thing. We are our own center of universe. And um, it's really important to recognize the impact that we have on our own universes. So for example, I want you to take yourselves off mute and shout at me everything that you do in a day that involves somebody else. Doing, doing some transactions with them, some trades. Yep. Yep. Looking at cooking, children, house, <laughs> clients, housework, homework, <laughs> shopping, Making connecting, tea. having conversations. Tea. I like that one. Dog walking, <laughs> <laughs> having okay. conversations, random ones yes. with random people, <laughs> bus stops, walking into town, pestering my children. Yes, exactly. So we've got a, like a whole mixture of work, home, um, friends, um, colleagues, random people that we meet on the street, you know, bump into or whatever. Just imagine the impact that you have on every single one of those people and that opportunity that you have to be an impact on every single one of those people. And the ripple effect, imagine you see this universe, the ripple effect of your actions. So if you're thriving, the chances of you having a positive influence on pretty much everybody around you are increased, right? I mean, we all have shitty days, clearly. Um, but it is an attitude. It's something that you practice. It's something that that the more you look for, the more you do. And it's really, really important. I have this thing, right? It's not selfish to be selfish. Imagine yourself in the middle of this universe doing all things for all people. Now imagine that you're not looking after yourself properly. Who then does all those things? Does it all come crashing down? Or does somebody else have to pick up? So by you looking after yourself, physically, mentally, emotionally, spiritually, you are not just looking after yourself, you are looking after that opportunity mm. to create all the ripples. Does that make sense? Yeah. It's, like, it's a bit like the oxygen in yeah, a, an is. airplane. Absolutely. You absolutely your mask have on to first. do it. Your, yeah, you absolutely have to put your own mask on first. Yeah. before you can help anybody else. Exactly, exactly that. But, you know, most people recognise the need to put their mask on first on the plane because it's rammed down their throat. Somebody tells them they've got to do it. Funnily enough, we are, I think, on this call, all adults. So we can all be responsible for our own lives. And these are all choices that we make. If you're not choosing to put your own oxygen mask on first, that is 
again, your choice. You take that responsibility. If you then fall apart or break or, you know, something goes wrong because of your neglect of yourself, then you are the one that's responsible for that. And I think that's a big thing at the minute. People are very keen on giving the responsibility to everybody else. You know, my marketing's really crap. I need a blueprint marketing plan. You know, rather than what can I do? Or who can I, who is the perfect person? Who is the ripple? I don't think there's enough thought that goes into those process, processes. Just a personal rant of mine. Um, all right. So what's the plan, Stan? <laughs> I blooming love it. What's it? Who who was the song? Does anybody know? Fifty ways. Yes, uh, Fifty ways. Who who sang it? Simon and Garfunkel. Simon. Paul Simon. Paul Simon. Sorry, just you know, it's a little bit different. Um, and now I've given you all an earworm. <laughs> just it's association thing, right? So nothing happens effectively unless you've got a plan. You could be thinking one thing and, I mean, it happened to me yesterday. I've got COVID brain, literally needed to print off a slide for some personal development that I'm doing. And I set it up, the printer wasn't working. It was switched off, somebody had switched it off. So I went in, I switched it back on. I thought, while it's warming up, I'll make myself a cup of tea. Off I go, make myself a cup of tea. Oh, dishwasher needs doing. So while the kettle's boiling, I'm doing the dishwasher. And then I got distracted by something else literally 10 minutes later. I'm stood in the kitchen going, what was I doing? Mm -hmm. So, you know, you can be really diverted if you don't have a clear plan and a clear structure. It doesn't need to be written down. It just needs to be like set in stone. Walking across a field, if you go for a walk, chances are you're going to walk on the already established path. But if you're trying to do something different, you've got to walk through the long grass, right? You've got to make your own path. So you've got to then be consistent about walking through that long grass. And without a plan of how you're going to make sure that you keep doing that, it's, it's not impossible. It's just going to be a little bit hard on yourself, quite frankly. We've got enough responsibilities in life to avoid having to make life harder for ourselves. So it's the old classic, I'm afraid. There's nothing new here. Who, what, why, how, where, and when. If you can answer those questions to what change you want to make, then chances are you're on a winner. Okay. Right, this is me, solely me. There's no film, there is no song. Um, uh, I suppose you could put, I can't get no satisfaction on there if you weren't going to follow it. There's a lot of talk about motivation and you know I'm really motivated to do something but motivation has a little bit of a sliding scale you can't make changes in your life without a little bit of determination as well as motivation so the determination is going to kick in when the motivation is starting to slide or when you get one of those CBA days do you know what CBA is can't be asked Okay, um, we all have CBA days. Uh, we all have C days, so that is the can't. I was very careful how I said that. There are days when you just can't. And it's really important to recognize those are the times that you really have to practice more self-care. Don't push when you can't. And the difference is recognizing whether it's a C day or a CBA day, okay? Hopefully, if you input some of these, it will give you a little bit of clarification, clarity's on there, about whether it's a C day or a CBA day. And the ones that I wanna really point out, I've pointed out already, uh, you and only you are responsible for the actions that you take and the choices that you make. So there's a lot of external influence that happens, but it's only you that can take the actions that you want to take. There's, I mean, in the health and fitness world, there is 
so much rubbish out there and you've got to really be aware of all the marketing that is around marketing to your pain points because all they want is your cash there's a lot out there just wants to take your money you don't need any of that you just need a little bit of this and a little bit of support so you are the one that's responsible it doesn't mean you can't have a support network around you to keep you accountable or to support you when it, it's a C day. Um, does everybody understand the difference between the routine and the ritual side? Can you see that on the right? Because there is a slight difference. It is routine is something that we do without thinking. Okay. Um, if, if we did, if we had to think about everything that we do, like walking to the bathroom, uh, walking to, I mean, I've got a walk to work, opening the door. I'm going to open the door now. <laughs> I'm going to step down. I mean, it would be just, so your routines are the, 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 the programming that runs behind the scenes. But you can create your own routines. And the easiest way of creating those is to create a ritual behind it. So something that you start with that is pleasurable, that you enjoy. And then build on the next activity to that. And then by the end of it, you get to do the thing that you've planned to do, okay? So for example, um, putting on your nicest pair of trainers to go to the gym, if you're going to the gym, or make it i have a big matchy matchy thing you'll be able to see even my bracelet matches my branding i am absolutely just it it brings me great joy so i have a ritual as to what i wear when i go to work and it and i love it so as soon as i start that first thing that brings me joy it takes me to the end point so i'm already there then my brain's not fighting me oh, i don't really want to go to work today Oh, I'm feeling a little bit rough. You know, I've got a really sore throat. Perhaps I shouldn't do it. No, it's, it, it, this is my joy. This is my thriving. So that ritual starts me off and psychs me up and brings me to that point of joy. So that's the difference. Routine sounds a little bit drudgy, but it has its place. I love a bit of ritual. Where can you put ritual into your life? Any questions on this? Does it, does it come down to choice, if you like? A routine, you don't really choose to do it. It's just something you do. But a ritual is something you choose to do. Um, well, I think routines you still choose to do. You know, you, you choose to brush your teeth every day. I'm not sure you find great joy in brushing your teeth every day. I don't know, do you? <laughs> little, little, little victories. Exactly that. I'm a huge fan of a little victory. Um, anything that lifts you up and gives you positivity, I think you, we can find those moments everywhere. Um, uh, one thing I didn't really talk about on this one is um, we're, we're big on setting goals, right? We're big on quarterly targets and reviews and la, 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 la. I think it's really important to enjoy the journey and to celebrate every single one of those little achievements, you know, on the days when you're having a CBA day and you still do it, like give yourself a real pat on the back. Like, absolutely, yeah, you know what? I really didn't feel like doing this, but I did it anyway and now I'm awesome. That kind of stuff, brain loves it. Brain loves it. So okay. how is habit different to routine slash ritual? How does that fit in? They're all kind of interlinked, aren't they? It's very difficult to be hugely, you know, um, hugely distinctual from it all. Again, we can fall into habits. You know, it's really easy to fall into a habit. It's really easy to fall out of a habit. Those habits that are perhaps a little bit more challenging. You know, I, I'm going to talk the exercise one and the diet one, okay? Because everybody's obsessed with exercise and obsessed with diet, even if they're not doing it. Because you are, I should be dieting or I should be exercising. I should be drinking 17 gazillion glasses of water a day. You know, whatever it is. Um, 
So those habits, oh, I'm going to put this habit now, uh, are really easy to fall off. Or I'm going to start it on Monday. Why? <laughs> if you really wanted to do it, you'd start now. Hmm. You know? Yeah, not put it off. It, it, it's a rel- If you're going to thrive, if it's a decision that you, your purpose, and it's going to support your purpose and drive you to thrive, why wait until Monday? You know, and then if you have a CBA day on a Wednesday, you go, uh, well, I've messed up this week, so I'll start again next Monday. Or you go, it's just a day, or it's just an hour, or it's just a moment. Let's go find something positive to look at, move on. I was watching my language there. Did you see? I'm very proud of myself. Move on. Because it's just a moment in time, right? Habits, you again, you choose. The difference between a habit can be one thing. Habit stacking, I'm sure some of you, most of you will have heard of. If you're trying to put in a new habit, it's quite easy to stack it on top of an existing habit. Yes. I'm trying to break the habit of, um, there's a habit I have of, of having a um, chocolate dark chocolate it's good quality it's not you know it's not fatty horrible stuff but I with coffee in the evenings and actually I've found that the easiest way to break it is just not to have coffee in the evenings I, I know it's decaf but it's just I have to have something else because otherwise it's just really just too difficult not to I would Julie I would ask you why <laughs> <laughs> just every so often not to have a little bit of chocolate no but it's that thing of grazing all day isn't it just oh well no, that is a different on. issue yeah. If the chocolate brings you joy, <laughs> sometimes yeah. damn chocolate. If it doesn't, if you look at that chocolate and go, that nah, I really want it, and you still eat it, that's one thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. If you look at the chocolate and go, oh, you beauty, I see. <laughs> then eat the damn chocolate. Really? Make, I've got a make whole box of Nuja Buja was winking at me out of the corner of my eye. <laughs> Yeah, what's in sight is in mind. Yeah, um, absolutely. Yeah. It's probably but, the hardest the hardest habit I have to break. But it, yeah, it's because it brings me too much joy, I think. That's then why the are you habit. breaking it? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Life's too short, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Totally. <laughs> okay. Right. Well, how much else have I got? Because I'm, I'm at 33 minutes. Right, this is quite important, this one. This is an exercise that you could do. Um, these are the various stacking of importance that I would class, I mean, apart from breathing, which is kind of quite key, uh, and which could take up a whole presentation in itself. Um, I would look at each area and mark yourself out of 10. I mean, zero being you're dead, right? One is totally dreadful. I'm really unhappy with this. And 10 being, I've nailed this. It's absolutely tippity top, loving it. Because if you, and the other right at the top, this stuff is the icing on the cake. It's the, once you've nailed everything else, it's the, how best can I do something? Like for an athlete, it would be, how can I optimize my nutrition? You know, it's not about looking at the new superfood and going, oh, I've really got to put that into my nutrition because chances are, if you're eating, you know, nothing's bad and nothing's good, but if you're not eating optimally, then a superfood isn't gonna make any difference at all. Your lemon water in the morning isn't gonna make any difference at all. We're, we're, we're literally, it is the Brucey bonus stuff. It's the ice, it's the cherry on the icing on the cake. Once you've nailed everything else, did everybody give themselves a score? Just quickly, gut instinct. I'm an absolute great believer in the gut instinct. Give yourself a score, because if we do have some time, I don't ramble on too much more, then this is going to be our starting point for the question that I have. Do you want us to put it in the chat box or do you- No, want no, to- it's, it's your private numbers, yeah. okay? It's all your individual, because as soon as you start putting it in the chat box, um, people start comparing. Yeah. And this isn't about 
comparing yourself to anybody else. This is about you and your thriving. All right. Am I good to move on? Julie, I'm sure you can see everybody. I can't see everybody. Yep. Yep. We're good. Brilliant. Okay. All right. I love this picture so much. It's so cute. It's not a song. It's just cute. Uh, it gives you a clue as to how I work with people, really. Um, if you can cope with a presentation done by me, you can work with me. <laughs> um, so this is my motto. What is the one baby step? Life can be hugely demanding, hugely overwhelming. It can be up and down, in and out, round and round, ziggity zaggedy, you name it, it can be it. The thing that keeps everything ticking is what is the one thing? If you were to change one thing in your life right now that would enable you to feel a little bit happier or thrive a little bit more or get that little glowy feeling inside a little bit more in your life, what would that one thing be? and keep it small. Don't go off on, right, I'm gonna run 5K every day for the next 17 years. You know, that's not what we're talking about. We're talking about Julie's bit of chocolate. Essentially, something really simple in your life. What could you change? You could take away, you could add, you could do, you could feel, what is the one thing? Write that down. I'm getting my bossy head on now, sorry. It's probably time for me to start shutting up. All right. Um, just so that you know, this is how I work with people. I have these conversations with them. I ask the questions. We build up a really close relationship. This is not about me making people puke through fitness. It's not about me saying you must do, you know, this or that you must have a juice cleanse um it's i work with people to help them thrive i want to thrive in my life nothing is off limits we make your health and well-being journey work for you and support you to thrive so and this literally is just some of what i do basically i'm in your corner <laughs> and there's no escape um I'm very supportive <laughs> and I've got a big stick and a carrot so uh if you're interested all these slides have got my email address and number on uh I'm always happy to have a chat I will never work with anybody who isn't ready and I will never work with somebody who doesn't have that uh relationship with me that is going to work so if there's any doubt I absolutely refer on to other people um just a little bit about me. So, blah, blah, blah. Final thing, what now? What's this? It's a wrap. It's a wrap, a wrap. Because it's nearly lunchtime. Okay, so, uh, Julia, I don't know what we're like on timings. We're good, we're good. It's 10 to 12. Okay, um, I don't know how you want to handle this, but this is kind of where I would like to suggest either questions mm. or have a little review of your pyramid. Decide the one commitment where you feel it's going to make a big difference in your life. Mm. And maybe have a discussion around it up to you. Yeah, brilliant idea. Would you like to stop sharing your screen, Sarah, so that I we can get win. everybody back onto the... Um, into the, onto the screen. The Hello, everyone. <laughs> that was brilliant. Oh, that was absolutely brilliant. A couple of people have had to leave early. It, they had other meetings already in the diaries. They said, what an absolutely yeah, brilliant absolutely. presentation. Um, and we do have other people leaving at 12. But I just want to say that's absolutely brilliant. I've written, you know, just like <laughs> pages of, of notes. That's always good to know. I know. It's absolutely fantastic. Really, really good. I mean, whoa. <laughs> I don't think the big one is it's not selfish to be selfish. Isn't that so empowering? You know, well, you'd be depends on where you are on your self care journey, isn't it? Yeah. I mean, different things resonate with different people. It'd be interesting to see who else feels that or what other. Um, My one, Sarah, is choice. Choice. 
yeah we all have choices choice is better than no choice and do you know what do you know what i say fiona i've seen her you can't escape me fiona uh what is the phrase that we use it's a conscious choice conscious choices <clears throat> massive fan what you're doing. yeah yeah and sure. then you choose Mm. Oh, it's, it's a it, well, that was a brilliant um presentation sarah and it was lovely to hear your story because i feel like i've known you for ages but i didn't know some of that stuff about you so um i know and um and also i was just really pleased to hear that tracy was your coach because yeah um that that's good that's great news that you got that support from her so that's oh, great. yeah bbb that was the start of the turnaround time yeah that was awesome yeah has anybody else got takeaways I, I love that thing about um, rituals being about joy. I hadn't quite made that connection in my brain. And then suddenly I realized, you know, like before I work out, I have really good gym socks and they give me so much joy. Like this is the littlest thing. It makes me so happy when I put a good pair of gym socks on. So I'm just now thinking about where else can I bring joy into those little... I don't know, oh, it's giving me goosebumps. See, that's one of my little glowy moments. Hurrah! <laughs> They're sweaty Betty with the extra padding. The do, oh, the do yeah. <laughs> best. A bit thanks, sweaty for Betty. thanks for sharing that, Tori. That's reminded me about my cycling, my merino wool cycling socks. I'm ridiculously pleased about those as well. They're just socks, but you know. But they're not they're just never, socks. They're never just socks. No. <laughs> First cup of tea in the morning. Oh. That's joyous. Loose leaf tea, or is it like tea bag? Or a... I'm, I'm happy as long as it's got caffeine in. Special mug. Yeah, see. <laughs> to see really... another cup of tea is a result sometimes, Andy, isn't it? It's what, Jim? Just to get to another cup of tea to survive that morning. You know, you, I've got there. Yeah. That's I a result. Have... Right. Oh, well, then, Jim, you need to be looking at why why we're surviving and not thriving in that yeah. morning. Yeah. Yeah, right. I'm going for lunch. Thanks, everybody. Bye. <laughs> yeah, it's a wrap. It is a wrap. So what's quite scary is I was, I was, I've been working with Sarah on and off for three years, and she's just amazing. I mean, I have written her a testimony. Read it, if you don't believe me. But, but it's, this is a terrible admission. But you know, in the Christian community, there's this expression: "What would Jesus do?" I have to confess sometimes. When I'm making a choice, it's what would Sarah say? Because I know it's that thing of conscious choice and it's that we have the power, we have the control. So yeah, what would Sarah say? WWSS. <laughs> you can give our little wristbands. I could, that's a great idea. <laughs> and oh dear. That's you know, I'm going to reward myself with some water. Yeah, do, do. have a drink, Sarah. So um, Emma has put, uh, put a, a really um, valid point into the chat, which is, um, you know, get the concept of selfish is not being selfish, but how can you start to push back on that where, you know, you, you've got those um, demands being made of your time, et cetera, et cetera. You know, it's, I suppose it's such, you know, choice, isn't it? But that's, it's so difficult to sort of, you know, move ahead with that. What would you advise on that? Um, having faith in yourself. It's that, it's that glow. Because if you, yeah, boundaries, Fiona. Um, if you know that what you're doing is going to benefit other people, because generally speaking, um, the selfish thing is because we're feeling guilty about not doing something else for somebody else. Oh. That's generally speaking why we start feeling selfish. Oh yeah, but I could be doing this, you know, or I've got that presentation to do for so-and-so, or, you know, there is always somebody else. George Swift, right? One of the things that has stuck with me all those years ago, um, he said once, if you don't have your own agenda, you're playing to somebody else's. So if you want to make change and you want to thrive, it doesn't mean don't do everybody else's. It just means put yourself first and do those essentials. There's that exercise, isn't there? Essential um, and necessary, necessary, but not essential. Those kind of varieties. Work out where you're sitting 
in those boxes and then put yourself up a few notches because you're worth it, right? What do you do with all the other shit that occupies literally every minute of your waking day? <laughs> you delegate it. Uh, yes. And it, again, that's a whole, whole new skill. You allow people to help you because one of the things that we are really crap at is allowing other people to help. It was such a hard thing for me to learn or ditch it if it's not relevant. You know, it's all on that priority box again, isn't it? If it's not necessary and not urgent, why are you even doing it? But I would say asking for help, practice that skill. You don't have to do everything. And accepting that other people are gonna do it differently to you, because you know, it's the Southey way, but I accept that other people are gonna do it differently. They don't have to do it my way. If I ask somebody to load the dishwasher, I accept it's not going to be loaded like I load it, all right? But is the stuff still going to get clean? Mostly. Um, <laughs> do I have to do it? No. Great. And let, learn to let go. Just practice. Is this high on my priorities? No. Park it. Let it go. Can I do anything about this right now? No. Park it. I've got a master list that I put stuff on. Like if you wake up at three o'clock in the morning, there's a little note, it goes in the master list. Is this important? Do you know what? I know it's on a list, so I don't have to remember it. And then once a week, maybe once a month, I review that list. Is there something I've missed? Is there something that's now gone up in priority? Otherwise, and then I have my non-negotiables. Yeah. So it's about taking a step back then and in yeah. investing some time and energy into working out what are the non-negotiables and what can be potentially done by somebody else. But you starting could. off with the non-negotiables, I suppose, is the most important thing, isn't it? Yeah, well, yeah, and, but we're making it bigger than it needs to be. Yeah. Like, if this is all new and you're completely overwhelmed and you just remember it's just one thing, one thing, one baby step, mm. that's it. So... Keep your life exactly how it is. Just keep moving on that one baby step. Yes, I love that. That whole thing of the one baby step. That's absolutely brilliant. And it literally doesn't need to be a big thing. Mm. Put your fluffy socks on. Mm. You know, eat the chocolate. Mm. Thank you, um, everybody, for joining us. And hopefully see you in March. I'll send out the communication and I'll send out the link to the recording, which the lovely Simon is going to take care of us, Kate, take care of for us after this. Um, but thank you, Sarah. Huge thanks. Absolutely thanks brilliant presentation. Me. And go and lie down now or do what, what you need to do. But, you know, thank you for joining us when you're not feeling 100% as well. Get in bed. And thanks I'll see you all soon. Bye. Bye.